uh, world can call a doctor um, on a fo mobile phone or any other device or even an app and get some advice. Uh, there is personalized uh, a treatment which is there depending on how what are the parameters which are there each person is treated differently uh, education support today we have so much of information about diabetes and its complications uh, there is proactive care because of remote monitoring you, you can provide timely interventions you can decide what is happening to the person whether they require admission I don't know I think most of you all must have seen Dr. Archana Sarda's talk today and how Due to uh, technology, they are able to reach right into the interiors to the last mile, so to say. Lifestyle integration with wearable devices. I think most people wear a device to track their steps, to track the food they are eating, to track various other things. It is also now cost effective. Earlier these things were expensive, today it is cost uh, effective and it reduces the cost of health care. There is research and development also uh, which improves. So uh, we have uh, basically the continuous glucose monitoring, the mo monitoring technologies which are there. They provide real-time uh, glucose readings, blood glucose meters, wearable devices. So continuous glucose monitoring also, we, we have seen it move in the last few decades. If you see on the right side is the first uh, CGM which was commercially available, that is the CGM Gold. We used to use it about uh, 15 years ago. It was very cumbersome, you could only track the patient's sugars for three days or so and they had to also calibrate it. Today on the other side of the spectrum we have these uh, you know, uh, glucometers where it's just a sticker which is attached and with the mobile phone they just have to scan and their blood sugar uh, reports are available. Understanding the parameters of AGP because with so much data when the blood sugar is being checked every five five minutes it becomes very confusing to understand what is the data you, but you understand so many parameters in this what is the glucose load what is the glucose variability the risk of hypoglycemia the risk of hyperglycemia all these things are um, available to us now everything can be tracked everything can be monitored now, uh, the time in range uh, targets, the, it's not just the fasting and PP blood sugars, it's the time in range, uh, the amount of time that a patient, uh, that a person with diabetes spends between uh, the time in range, which is between 70 to 180, impacts the uh, uh, future for them. The amount that is time below range um, should be, of course, less than 4%. The time above range, about 25%. And the time above range, which is above 250, should be less than 250. Again, the time below range, which is below um, 54 milligram percent, should be also less than 1%. So we are able to map out how the patient is managing their blood sugars, what are the parameters that uh, we can me measure, and uh, we can then see. So this is how we get a patient's report, not just uh, the blood sugars, you also know. Uh, what is the time in range, what is available. So this technology has definitely enhanced the quality of life of people with diabetes. It has enhanced our diagnosing capabilities of uh, people with diabetes. In one page, you are able to say, give a good report card or whatever the report card is there, it can be given to the patient. And they also feel that, okay, this is how my blood sugar is. Uh, besides that, you can also add in the medications can be added onto it, the lifestyle, whether they have walked, whether the, what kind of food they have, a report can be generated. Uh, I don't know if you can see where it, it's written over there that, you know, meals or snacks which are often high in carbs have been consumed by this patient. So this gives a further in-depth analysis. So this technology helps understand what is the uh, lifestyle of the person. It also gives a comprehensive analysis as to what is the average blood sugar, what is the, um, e, uh, the not HP, but the EAG blood sugar. Now, what is the significance of time and range from, the, uh, from a doctor's perspective? It is strongly associated with the uh, risk of microvascular complication and the more our uh, patients are able to keep their blood sugars within the time and range, the risk of microvascular complication is definitely lesser. 
Uh, also, uh, the time in range matters from the uh, perspective that it is very crucial uh, in the outcome of the care of diabetes. Uh, the diet, exercise, whether the blood sugars, uh, these are all very important for diabetes ma management. A lot of people, they want to take different types of treatment. This is a very good way to analyze as to what is the impact of the treatment, whatever they might be taking or not taking. So the way that we use it is that when a patient comes to the clinic, you screen the patient if they have any underlying problem, uh, check their blood sugar reports, and then you can ask them to do a CGM. Once the reports come, you can also then advise them regarding their medication, their diet, lifestyle, all this. And uh, thereafter, they understand that how whatever they are doing is impacting their blood sugar level. They get a nice report card, and that improves their adherence to treatment as well as uh, improves outcome. Now, SMBG. On the left side, you will see that this was one of the oldest glucometers. I think some people would recognize that this was the glucometer that first was available about 20 year to, no, about 30 years ago. I remember when I was a resident, this was the glucometer that we used to use. And it used to take two minutes to get the blood sugar reading. And those two minutes could be very crucial. And on the other side, you have a glucometer in today's time. So technology has changed. We now have uh, glucose monitors which are affordable. Um, there are traditional ones which require a blood sample on the strip. They can be synced with the computer to give some insights as to how uh, the patient's uh, blood sugar is uh, levels are doing. Their accuracy, they are very convenient to carry. Uh, they have a good memory storage. The, it's very beneficial for a patient because they know exactly how their blood sugars are doing. This also helps us uh, to put in, do some timely <coughs> intervention depending on the blood sugar reports. And uh, the costing now is much less than it used to be. Future, uh, it will probably be integrated into platforms wherein we can get some more data. Uh, besides this, we also have new technologies like smart watches, smart rings. A lot of people are wearing rings to track their sleep patterns. A lot of people wear ECG monitors, smart clothes, eyewear. All these are things which can be used to track various parameters um, and therefore improve the quality of diabetes care. Of course, the benefits are uh, there. Then we come to the insulin delivery devices. The insulin pumps, which, uh, of course, insulin 100 years ago used to look like this. On the left side, you can see the vial, and you can see the size of the syringe as well as the needle. It used to be so scary for anybody to take injection. And on the right side, you see how uh, technology has changed, and now we have these small insulin pens with very fine needles. A lot of times you, you can inject to a small child and they will not even wake up crying because that is the size of the needle. So these are beneficial to see that um, they get adequate uh, dose. There is improved adherence uh, to the patient, uh, to the treatment. Insulin pumps, on the left side you can see how the first prototype pump was. It was of course never commercially available because it was too bulky to be used. And on the other hand, you have this small tiny pump which is used now currently. Uh, the journey has been long. Um, a lot of uh, other glucometers were there during this time, but now we have uh, what is close to the hybrid closed loop. It monitors the blood sugar uh, and uh, you can even suspend the, uh, the pump. It will suspend the delivery. Uh, when a person is going into hypoglycemia and this closes the loop. Uh, there are uh, There's a blood sugar monitor which checks the sugar, the glucose monitor, and uh, there is a delivery device. All this is uh, connected with a computer and this gives us graphs which, are, which make it easier to treat the patient. As you can see, this is the auto uh, correct feature which is available. The, on the latest pump and patients are able to maintain their blood sugar levels within the normal limits as close to normal limits it has been seen that about 47 percentage of the person of participants are able to achieve their hba1c goal and about 84 percent of them got their goal along with optimal settings and uh, 79 percent of them achieved it with the time in they achieved the time in range goals also so
so uh, in the real world these glucometer uh, these uh, insulin pumps are uh, good to be used now uh, mobile technology because everybody has a mobile in today's time there are uh, mobile health apps which can track uh, whatever you are doing whether you, whether you are eating whether you are drinking water whether it's uh, the steps that you are taking exercise that you are doing everything can be tracked and therefore you can get more data which can be then analyzed uh, we as uh, physicians also have uh, electronic records which are there these also help us to uh, identify what is happening with the patient and um, telehealth telehealth is something which over the last 5 years it has increased dramatically because in covid there were a lot of times when patients were not able to access their healthcare worker uh, healthcare profession they were not able to visit the hospital they were not able to visit their doctors uh, but uh, they were able to at least phone them and get uh, advice so uh, telehealth is something which has improved it um, it improves the diagnosis treatment can be done pre uh, strategies for prevention research evaluation and continuing medical education so the goal is to improve the health of individuals and communities through this ac uh, accessible healthcare this is a study which uh, dr jyoti dev has done in kerala and uh, he has a specialized um, uh, telemedicine system which uh, they were able to analyze and see that um, those patients who were uh, you know remotely followed with this app they had better control and their uh, complications were much less as compared to those who were on conventional care uh, the different strategies of telemedicine are uh, the education can be done consultation monitoring of the patient's sugars the case management and mentoring also because there are people in remote areas so um, in the last few years we have seen so many talks by doctors in um, urban cities or even uh, anywhere across the globe which have been um, through zoom or through other uh, platforms have been communicated to people all over the world so there is a nice uh, exchange of information uh what happens with this the opportunities are there um, it is tailor made patient education and awareness can be done uh, instant feedback can be generated there is a lot of data sharing also which is there uh, maintenance of the data can be done and the quality uh, care is maintained but there are a lot of um, uh, obstacles in the implementation the data divide data privacy issues are something which is there Uh, lack of awareness limited infrastructure and funding and lack of policies which are there so um, of course it, it is very important that we all embrace technology because we can improve the quality of life of all our patients personalize the treatment uh, empower our patients to manage their goals and uh, have better targets thank you i just finished in time so this is a picture of the other end of our uh, of mumbai this is atul setu again technology is what has uh, provided that we are able to cut short the traveling time and uh, also uh, as i am the chairperson of maharashtra i would like to invite you for uh, maha rssdi do save the date and i hope to see a lot of you over there thank you